This PowerPoint presentation for nurses will introduce the new InterShift reporting form and process. Acknowledgement goes out to the working group who assisted in the development of the InterShift reporting forms. Brenda Roseweave, Care Team Manager of Lactabani Sunnywood, Carlene Irvin, Clinical Resource Nurse at Kin Place Personal Care Home, Wanda Hicks, Care Team Manager at Rosewood Lodge in Stonewall, Cynthia St. Clair, Personal Care Home Program Manager, and myself, Michelle Moroz, Personal Care Home Program Staff Development Coordinator. According to Safer Healthcare Now, one of the biggest contributing factors to 90% or more of clinical occurrences and critical incidents involving residents, patients, and clients is lack of and or poor communication and teamwork amongst healthcare providers. Our goal is to reduce duplication in charting while increasing quantity and quality of information shared between shifts of our healthcare staff. Overall, improved communication and teamwork is essential to ensure quality resident care and safety. The InterShift reporting tool is a way of communicating relevant and important time-sensitive resident assessment data to the next care providers on the following shift in an effective and efficient manner. This InterShift reporting tool is meant to enhance verbal face-to-face -face report between nurses or taped report that is followed by a very brief touch base with the nurse or healthcare team to clarify urgent and essential matters. The InterShift reporting tool helps the nurse or healthcare aide to provide specific resident data to the next care provider. In combination with the interdisciplinary progress notes and or flow sheets, the InterShift reporting tool helps provide the entire scope of assessment, intervention, and evaluation data. The InterShift reporting tool may be utilized in certain situations as evidence of communication sharing or lack thereof in combination with IPNs to complete an investigation or other type of situation where evidence may be required. What should the InterShift reporting form not be used as? The tool should not be meant to replace documentation or charting in the interdisciplinary progress notes or flow sheets. The InterShift reporting tool is not meant to be used as a worksheet to discard, but to be completed for all three shifts in a 24-hour period. The data entered, therefore, must be kept clear and legible. The InterShift reporting tool is not a permanent part of the resident chart, However, it will be maintained as evidence in a binder for a period of three months. The InterShift reporting tool is to be kept in a binder in date order as a communication reference tool. The most recent date will remain as the first or top page in the binder. Some sites will have more than one InterShift report page per 24-hour period, depending on site size and number of nurses and healthcare aides on each unit. For example, if there is one nurse and two healthcare aides working on any given shift, there will be a total of three InterShift reporting pages, one for the nurse and two for the individual healthcare aides. All of the sheets for the same 24-hour period, regardless of number, will be stored together in the binder and preferably stapled together when there are many pages. It is the role of the clinical team manager and clinical resource nurse and or designate to ensure the InterShift reporting form binder is maintained properly and pertinent information is shared amongst healthcare staff at all times to ensure resident care is safe and practices are followed. This is an example of the top part of the InterShift reporting form that will detail any site safety information that should be shared with the following shift. This is not an all-inclusive list of what should be reported here. However, any site safety issues or concerns that you think should be shared should be entered here. For example, broken equipment, icy walkways, power outages, maintenance concerns, staff concerns, etc. The important point here to note is that, again, it should not be a lot of documentation in this area, just a cue for the following shift so they are aware of any site safety issues that they either need to follow up on or be aware of. 
This part of this form in no way replaces the necessity for documentation of occurrences. This is an example of the resident specific area that will be detailed. The forms that you will be using will have resident name and room numbers already applied. They will not have to be entered on a daily basis. So what we want to be doing here for each individual resident is to highlight the situation that may be occurring. So under the column situation, you're either going to be highlighting whether you're going to be charting about an occurrence, an illness, an infection, or any other follow-up that's required for the healthcare team. If there are no situations and nothing to chart for the specific resident, the whole area will be left blank. Whether nights, days, or evenings, in general, any data that's entered in one of these three columns is meant to be in point form again and it will be any pertinent resident nursing assessment data that requires follow-up in relation to resident physical, psychosocial, mental, or spiritual well-being. Point form is essential to prevent duplication in charting. In order to cue the next staff member into the fact that there may be additional documentation, the area in each of the three columns for nights, days, or evenings has a box that says CIPNs. What you need to do is put a check mark in that box when additional documentation is provided in the resident chart. By checking this box, it flags the next care provider that additional information is available and nursing follow-up is required. What do we include in shift to shift report? Well, this is not an all-inclusive list. Any data that you deem essential and necessary for the safe resident care should be information that's shared. It is our job to mitigate all risk to our residents. We want to ensure that our communication and documentation is complete and comprehensive and that the loop is closed leaving little to no room for error. In general, any information that goes on during any one of the shifts that you feel will impact the following shift in any way, shape, or form regarding resident care or care needs should be reported. This includes changes in physical, psychosocial, mental status, etc. for any resident any new falls or injuries that occur on any shift, or any updates to any falls or injuries that have occurred on a previous shift. Flagged care plan updates. The last time a resident was turned or changed. A resident who didn't sleep well or eat well. Something different from their normal. Results of any new tests or abnormal tests that may require urgent attention on the next shift. Any consults or med reviews that impact the care we provide. Any updates regarding routine medications and or treatments. For example, it's important to share when medications have been missed for a resident because it can impact the following shift in the resident's health status. Missed treatments as well. Any missed treatments not completed during a shift can and should be completed by the following shift and not left undone. Any information on new medications or new treatments? Wound care status and or changes. Residents going to or coming from the hospital. Residents on comfort care, their needs and present condition. Residents with high or low blood sugar. And residents who have been given a suppository and outcomes of any bowel regime. Again, this is not an all-inclusive list. We have to, as nurses, keep in mind how fragile our geriatric elderly population is and how quickly their health status can change. Thus, the need for comprehensive, all-inclusive reporting. 
Keep in mind the point form notation is meant to alert the next nurse on shift to the information while the IPNs and flow sheets paint the entire picture of the resident situation or concern and allow for precise, accurate, and complete planning and follow-up. All data related to the point form notation should be documented further in the IPNs if applicable. Placing a check mark in the box titled CIPNs is a flag that additional information is documented in the resident chart and the nurse is required to read same to ensure the resident care needs are met. For example, my point form notation for a resident who becomes ill will be situation illness checked off. Perhaps in the point form notation for my day shift will be nausea and vomiting. And CIPNs checked off with further information including all vital signs and further follow-up assessment and planning. IPNs will always include assessment information, interventions, and outcomes or plans. It will be the responsibility of the subsequent care providers to ensure the plan is initiated and or finalized and the result further documented. Remember the nursing process. It is an ongoing loop of nursing assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervention, and evaluation. Nursing assessment is the review and clinical history and assessment of the resident. The clinical history may be information provided from previous documentation. Critical thinking and communication is key to ensuring positive outcomes for the residents who we provide care for. Nursing diagnosis is developing that appropriate diagnosis from a nursing perspective and a problem list to further plan and develop an interdisciplinary plan of care and provide interventions performing procedures, offering treatments, medications, or alternatives, as indicated. And finally, evaluating the results of those interventions. Have they worked? Have they not worked? Going through the loop again, what can we do differently and why? The nurse signs their name in the appropriate column of the nurse's sheet based on their shift worked, nights, days, or evenings. One hour prior to shift end, the nurse will gather health care aid report from all health care aides on shift. They will then gather the health care aid report tools and use all of these tools to share information with the following shift. Please note that it is the responsibility of the nurse to chart in the integrated progress notes as required. Any pertinent information shared by the health care aides that require nursing assessment and follow-up. So report is shared with the team coming on to the next shift by going over details on both the nurse report tool and the health care aid report tool to ensure all information is both transferred and understood and follow-up plans are initiated for the next shift. Reporting in this manner should take no longer than approximately 15 minutes. Upon completion of the 24-hour page, the night shift nurse will place the sheet in the designated binder and ensure there are new pages available for the following shift of both nurses and health care aides. Random audits will occur to ensure that information entered on the intershift reporting tool that requires additional documentation in the integrated progress notes is taking place. Remember, the intershift reporting tool does not replace the necessity for excellent documentation and or follow-up. And finally, expectations of implementing this new process. The intershift reporting tool will be started at all Interlake Eastern personal care home program sites effective immediately. The feedback form for staff is to be completed and returned to the clinical team manager no later than October 31st for review. Audits will take place at all sites in December, 
February and April in collaboration with staff development and the site care team managers to ensure compliance of the process. As required, additional education and support and or performance management will occur to ensure resident safety. Thank you for your time and thank you for caring.